Number two, we're going to do a confidence interval on this thing. So I think I'll play with that same snowfall data. So I think I'll merge these two cells in order to put a title in here. Not amazingly descriptive, but snowfall in inches, right? I, I could, if I was being real good, I would add for the Twin Cities area since whatever. Anyway, um, what do we got? We got some numbers here. We got like a bunch of numbers. We got 33 inches in one year. That goes back to 1890. 42 inches in 1900, 37 in 1910, down to 21, then down to 14. What was going on back then, huh? And then, whoa, up to 43, uh, excuse me, 53 in 1940, and then uh, 89, wow, in 1950, good year for snow. Back down to 40, a little more normal, 55, 21, another low snow year in 1980. 44 inches, 75, a bumper crop in 2000, 85, a mega bumper crop in 2010, back to something like normalish in 2020. Okay, there's our data. So you could just get the mean of this. Let's, in fact, let's just do that. Let's do the mean. Now, the mean of a sample is not called mu, remember. Mu is what you call the mean of a population if you actually knew the actual all of the snowfalls ever. But this is for a sample, so we call it x-bar. But the way we calculate it, let's come up to formulas. Let's come over here. Let's look at, uh, let's see, more functions. Statistical. Yeah, look at all these averages. You got all these different averages. We want the one that's a plain old average. Boom. So the way you calculate an average is you basically put the numbers in. Now, this threw me off at first. Notice how it has number one and number two. I'm like, what are you talking about number one and number two? There's just a bunch of numbers. What they mean is uh, down here, number one, you can put in up to 255 arguments. Why there's a limit, I don't know. But if you had like 500 numbers, you'd have to put some of them in here and the rest of them in here, I guess. We don't have so many. So all I really got to do is, you know, hold, drag, boom, highlight, insert, bam. There's our average. Now, at first, it might have told you 46 point, like 86994322221, whatever. Uh, what you could do is you could right click, format cells, this comes up. Choose the number format with two decimal places. I actually did that earlier. So 46.9-ish, shall we say, inches. That seems to be the average snowfall, based on this data anyway. Question, how close is that? In other words, what a confidence interval does is says, okay, that's for your sample, but what about for the population? Is the population mean really the same as this? And it's like, well, that would be what we call a point estimate. It's like, well, it's our best guess, but we can put error bars on it, right? That's the whole idea. You put some kind of error bars on it. So to get to at the error bars, we're going to need some more stuff. We're going to need to know little s, which is the standard deviation for the sample. We're going to need to know the number of things in the sample. And we're going to need to choose a significance level that we're interested in. With that data, we will be able to calculate E, our margin of error, and form our inter interval. So let's come back up here and start getting these formulas in. So standard deviation. OK, I'm in formulas. Good. Come over here. Click. More functions. Statistical. I need a standard deviation. Come on down to S somewhere down here. There it is. OK, you got these various things, but uh, this is the one we want. Standard deviation, whoops, based on a sample. So we have a sample. We don't have the entire population of snowfalls. If we did, we'd use standard deviation.p based on the entire population. We don't have that. We have a sample. So make sure you use this one. They give different values, right? So make sure you use standard deviation.s for sample. Got to use that one. Boom. Same thing. What are the numbers? These are the numbers. Insert. There it is. So standard deviation, that's pretty high, right? 46 with a standard deviation of 23. Sounds like a lot of variation to me. N is the number of data points. Well, you could just count them, or if you want, you could come over here and use, under more function statistical, use the count. Just count. There are, insert, 14, 14 snowfall data points. Ah, ah, ah. Whatever. Alpha, usually we use about 0.05. Remember, that's kind of your workhorse value. And uh, well, actually, 
usually we would say it this way. We would say 95% confidence level. But a 95% confidence level means 0.05 significance level. They're basically, they add up to 100% or 1. I never did figure out why do we use percentages for confidence levels, but we use decimals for alphas. I don't know. But that adds up to 100% or 1. So anyway, that's our alpha. Now, for the main event, let's get our margin of error. How do you do that? You come over, formulas, come over here. You're looking for more function statistical. And you're looking for a confidence interval, right? So it's got a dot norm and a dot t. And just trust me, you want to use dot t. Um, dot t is a little more accurate for, for samples. So alpha. See, I could type the 0.05 in here, I suppose. Or I could just say, get it from that cell. See, the standard deviation. We're going to assume that this is what we know. Boom. The size of the sample. Well, that would be this. Boom. So notice we took into account the S, the N, and the alpha. Notice the X bar doesn't enter into it at all. But uh, this will give us our error bars. Insert. 13.31. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so now I'm going to format that to be a number with, yeah, two decimal places is fine. There it is. There's our margin of error. So the average snowfall is 47 inches plus or minus 13. That's quite a range, isn't it? Now, to be official, let's write this. So I'm going to here, I'm going to do a calculation. You hit the equals first, and that tells Excel, look, I want you to calculate this. Don't type it. Calculate it. X bar minus the margin of error. That's our low side, right? Hit return. So 33.54 on the low side. Now I want to enter text. Let's see if I can just do this. Less than, oops, mu, less than like this. Let's see if that works. Hey, it worked. Cool. I'd like to center it though. I have to go back home to do that. Home, center. Good. So remember, mu stands for the, the true mean of snowfalls. The, 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 the true value that we don't really have access to other than through the sample. The sample says it's in the ballpark of 47, and we're saying plus or minus a certain amount. On the high side, we would say equals x bar plus the margin of error. Close. So it's between 33 and a half and 60. <laughs> Quite a range. And then if we want to be really proper about it, we would over here, we would write 95% confidence level. That's actually important. And what I think I will do here, I want I want all of this centered, really. So, Alia, get centered. Okay, I'm going to bold it, and I'm going to make it yellow, because that's kind of the, the answer to our problem here. So for these snowfall inches, 14 values of snowfall inches, it's predicting, or it's telling us, that with 95% confidence, the, the real mean snowfall for the Twin Cities, seasonal snowfall, is between 33.5 and 60. It's quite a range, if you think about it. And the 95% confidence level basically says there's a 5% chance we're wrong, <laughs> and it's outside of that interval. So we're just saying, yeah, it's it's probably, you know, it's probably in there, 95%. I suppose I could use a, a higher confidence interval. Let's just see what it looks like in the 99% confidence level. Now I'm curious. 99% confidence level. Well, this would be, well, what we do is... Oh, I don't want to do it separately. I'll just I'll just monkey with the original formula right here. So I'll just well I could set it right here. I can set the the alpha to say 0.1 right here. So let's look at 90%. That would be a 0.1. See it updates for us between 36 and 57. What if I used a 0.2, which means I've got a 20% chance of being wrong? You know, it, it shrinks up. Anyway, we don't have to play with that. Let's put it back to 0.05 so we don't have a broken spot worksheet here. Okay, boom. Well, I'm just going to try to prove something to you here. This is kind of an aside. PS. Let's make it a blue PS. Okay. The formula that we used back in uh, luxury days was you had this critical value of T. Remember it said T sub alpha over 2. I'm not going to type the sub alpha over 2. Times the standard Deviation of the sample divided by the square root of the sample size. That's how we calculated this by hand. What would we get? Oh, I don't want to set the equals here. It'll freak out. Um, the t you have to look up. Well, 
Good thing I got a student tea table right here. So we got how many? 14 at 95%. Okay, 14 at 95%. I've got a 2.160. That would be the critical value of T, the T sub alpha over 2. The S is up here, 23.06. And divided by the root of the sample size, 14. And what does that come out to? Well, I guess I'll just keep typing it right here. Equals what now? So, Mr. Calculator, 2.16 times 23.06 divided by square root 14 equals, well, how do you like that? It says 13.31. Wouldn't you know it? Looks like we chose the right function, right? So confidence.t gives us the, there it is, right there, boom. So uh, you don't necessarily have to do this part on your, on your spreadsheet, but this is what we're looking for, a nice confidence interval. You'll have different data to play with, of course, but this would be your basic, basic approach. So that was actually kind of a short one, right? Hope you enjoy it. How do I turn this off again?